Welcome to Journey to Misery, where I explain complicated comics, characters and concepts. It's the patient, the patient, the flex, the power heart. My name's Karen Shiak, and this week we are on week three of... Daredevil. Daredevil. Still. And you didn't have to look at the board to see what it no, was. No, I still know it. So yeah, we're on Daredevil this week, again. Halfway there? Almost. Halfway through this episode, we'll be halfway there. Oh god. So far, it's five episodes all together. Okay. Today we're talking all about the Marvel Knights Daredevil. Uh-huh. Which is, I mentioned this in another episode, I'm not sure when, but there was a time when Marvel were doing really badly, financially. Yeah, um, I know that they're like, everything went to shit and then they brought a couple of like movies out. X-Men? Yeah, X-Men and Blade really saved Yeah, it. and then they were okay. But also, they basically set up a separate studio called Marvel Knights. Oh right, so Marvel Studios and Marvel Knights? No, 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 they set up a separate comics division. Oh, okay, right, right. Called Marvel Knights, which was run by Jimmy Palmiotti and Joe Casada. Okay. And they said, okay, these are our characters that we're not really doing anything with, with right oh, now. Oh yeah, and they got them to write like a whole bunch yeah, of so stuff. Yes, that's where that Inhumans mini comes from. Yeah, they like that's wrote what, their take on everything. Yeah, well it wasn't necessarily their take, it was they brought in like some guys from the indie comics or some oh, yeah. guys from Hollywood. So the first story we're going to be covering is by Kevin Smith. Okay. From Clerks and Mole Rats and that. So, um, that really helped revitalise Marvel as well. Yeah. So we're going to be doing that story. We're going to be diving into a run by a guy named Brian Michael Bendis. Okay. Who is, I mentioned him before on the show, he's kind of Marvel's superstar writer. Yeah. He's their guy. He wrote The Avengers for ten years. He's been writing X-Men for the past three years. He wrote Daredevil for about four years. He's a definitive writer on pretty much whatever he touches. Nice. Good work. So before we get started, I really want to take some time to just thank everyone that listens to the show. We've been steadily increasing for the past three months now, and pretty much every month we've doubled our listenership. It's ridiculous. So we had around 600 in the first month, we had about 1,500 in the second month, nearly 3,000 in February. Yeah, that was that was outrageous. We really, really appreciate it. When we put up the last episode, the last end of our episode, we got 400 downloads overall for the show. Nice. Within two days. So we really appreciate everyone that's listening to the show. We also want to take time out to really focus and thank two more Patreon supporters. Yeah, I don't understand how like people still want to do this. Don't dissuade them. <laughs> I'm not dissuading them. It's just like, I'm... I'm in the belief now that everyone's like, yeah, I really want to touch this fucking movie. <laughs> well, first of all, we want to say thank you to Kelly. Oh, yeah. Who is yeah. at Keltronica on Twitter. And Josh Fleming, who doesn't have a Twitter account that I'm aware of, so I can't plug that. I'm sorry, Josh. They both pledged at the $5 level, Good which eggs. means they get to choose an episode each. I've been in contact with Kelly. She has chosen Dick Grayson. Yes. So we'll be doing an episode all about the former Robin, former Nightwing, current super spy. I'm excited about that. I don't really know anything. Other than what you know from just general Batman and Robin stuff. Yeah, like I know that. But... We, oh, we might watch Batman and Robin. <gasps> yes. It's a good idea. Thank you, Kelly. And we've got some more Patreon news today. Okay. Today, we reached the $80 mark. Which means we're going to start doing Journey into Misery Let's Plays. We can do the thing. Starting with Injustice Gods Among Us. Have I played that? Yes. Yeah, I have the played that. The fighting the... game. I have played that you've... many, many times. You've not, really. You've played You've played the tutorial and then you started the story mode but skipped over all the bonkers story. <laughs> no, I've watched the story. I thought you skipped over it. I skipped over it the first time. Okay. And I've gone back and watched it and it was ridiculous. Yeah, so we're going to go through that. But that means we've only got one goal left before we're out of goals. No! <laughs> we are $20 away, as of recording, from the $100 mark, which gets us to a very special episode where we watch Howard the Duck. It's there. It's on the bookcase. I bought Howard the Duck on DVD. It's going to happen at some point. We just need your help to get there. It's physically in our lives. But once we get to the $100 mark, we're out of goals. So I've added three more. Oh god, what are they? At $120, we are going to watch the worst comic book movie of all time. Frank <laughs> Miller's Will Eisner's The Spirit. No. And we're going to record an episode about that. I don't want to do that either. <laughs> this is a journey to misery for both of us. I told you about this earlier today. 
I went to go see that at the cinema when it came out. My friend paid for me to go see it, and I still I asked him for my money back. <laughs> Is that bad? It's terrible. If we survive, if this relationship survives <laughs> beyond that movie, <laughs> if it survives beyond How the Duck, <laughs> our one hundred and fifty dollars, we'll be able to get a second PS4 controller. They're really expensive. They're really expensive, yeah. So, the game I really want to get to are like the Lego games, like Lego Marvel and Lego Batman. Yeah. And I think that'd be really funny if we can play those co-op. Yeah, like, that'd be better on, like, a two people yeah. thing. And then at $200, we will do video episodes of Journey into Misery. Oh, God. Uh, that'll be additional to the regular episodes we do. They might not be full character analyses like we do, but we'll do regular video episodes of me and the lovely... Helena Hart in video format. Full glory. I just realised, like, when you show me pictures of, like, dogs and stuff, you get to see my face. Yeah. And they just get to hear me, like, like, screeching about it. Exactly. And also, I'm trying to think of some more awards on top of the four that we have now. So if anyone has any ideas for what they'd like to see from us, from Patreon, let us know, journeytomisery at gmail.com. One last quick note about the Patreon. We've been going on about this for too long. Because of some of the stuff we have planned around Avengers Age of Ultron and Marvel's New Secret Wars... There's a lot happening. Outside of the Patreon episodes we already have scheduled, anyone else that pledges at the $5 mark, we won't, we're going to get to their episode, but it won't be until the middle of May. That, it's not that long away, really. Yeah, I like that. But, but, like, I just I don't want people to feel like, yeah, well, the, you have to wait. Yeah. Because it's not like that. Yeah, well, I try to get to them as soon as possible. So that's all the Patreon business out of the way. Lastly, we have an image gallery. If you go to kingandpost.com. <laughs> it's still there. Go to the episode page for this episode. Click through to the image gallery. I'm going to be showing Helen the characters so she can react to them. And you can see the exact image she's reacting to. Yes. Okay, we're ready to go. Yeah, I'm good. So I want to fill in the gaps because there's about five years in between and the sentencing Kevin Smith, maybe a bit more. That's a long time. Yeah. So we're going to try and bridge the gaps between the Nesenti and this point. Okay. So do you remember Matt's ex-girlfriend, Heather Glenn? I do, yes. She had the company, the like it was a, her family's company that she inherited, and there were some shady people trying to take over the company, and Stiltman showed up. Oh yeah, Stiltman, <laughs> love yeah. him. So in between this, she killed herself due to alcoholism. Oh wow, right off the bat. Also... Do you remember Matt's ex-girlfriend, Glory? There's a lot of women. Yeah. The photographer from Born Again. She yep. left Matt and she got with Foggy for a bit. Yep. She was killed by a serial killer named Cruel, with a K. Fuck's sake. Okay. Right. But there is good news. Matt does eventually reunite with Karen. Okay. That's good. For a while he gets injured and he has to rock a body armour costume. that looks like this. Oh, that's cool. Okay. No, show me it again. <laughs> there it is, the body arm costume. No, I still think it's pretty cool. Okay, it's very 90s. Yeah, like, that's cool. He fakes his death and goes under the name Jack Battling. Okay. <laughs> like his dad battling Jack Murdoch. Yeah, got that. But eventually he comes back as Matt Murdoch and he takes a job for Rosalind Sharp. Okay, I like her hair. Who is Foggy Nelson's mother. Oh, okay. She, she runs a big law firm. That at this point, Foggy and Matt both work for. That makes sense that Foggy's in the business then. Yeah. So, we're starting off with a story called Guardian Devil. Okay, right. This is by Kevin Smith. Yes. Of Clerks, Small Rats, Red State was a movie that happened. <laughs> and the art is by Joe Casada. Okay, yeah. Joe Casada was the editor in chief of Marvel Knights. Yes. And would eventually become the editor-in-chief of Marvel Comics for several years before moving on to a separate role where he focuses on bringing Marvel properties to other mediums. So he's a... He's a he, he's his a role, successful man. Yeah. His role in Marvel Knights catapulted him to one of the top executive roles. He must be raking it in. Yeah. He's also a very successful artist of varying quality. Very quality. He's, okay. There was a time when he was very good and he's kind of just gone overboard with his style now and it's not as good as it used oh, to be. Oh, no, he, he did... The, oh, okay. 
Never do that. It's a bad move. So to to start this story off, this is six months after Karen Page has left Matt Murdock again. Okay, right. And he's just kind of devastated by that. Oh no, he had a second go. So Matt's giving confession when he hears the rushed heartbeat, double heartbeat of, of a woman in trouble. And he rushes out to save her from thugs oh, baby. chasing her. You picked that up pretty quickly. No, I was like double heartbeat and I was like, it's not like the doctor. I was trying to trick you into thinking it was like the doctor. You know, there is a baby. <laughs> and I was like, shit, no. <laughs> this could only go badly. <laughs> There's some thugs chasing her and he causes their car to crash. But she gets away, leaving him to explain to the crash car to the cops. Okay. And there's a cool little side note where Daredevil's like, oh, it's fine. Like, as a lawyer, I brokered a deal with the city that covers superhero damage. <laughs> of course. Nice little loophole there. Yeah. So back at the law offices, Foggy introduces Matt to a woman named Lydia McKenzie. Okay. Who he's helping through her divorce case. Right. But Matt gets distracted by hearing the woman's heartbeats again, but he loses track of them. Okay. He heads out into the night to clear his head and maybe find the woman, but he doesn't. He loses track of her. Okay. He meets back up with Foggy the next day and he tell and Matt's like, you don't usually take divorce cases. Does he like her? And Foggy tells him why he's taking the case. This lady, Lydia, was sterilised without her knowledge at the request of her husband. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. And <laughs> Foggy admits that although he's dating Liz Osborne, yeah. who is... Harry Osborne's ex-wife yes he's falling for this Lydia oh no Matt starts to give his advice when he hears the heartbeats again right outside his office he opens the door to find the woman Gwyneth standing there holding a baby oh okay so she wasn't pregnant there was a, there was an actual baby yeah okay she tells Matt that she's a virgin okay and people are hunting her down for her immaculate conception even though that's not what the immaculate conception is no. And Daredevil as a Catholic should know that. <laughs> wow. The Immaculate Con- like the immaculate Conception was Mary, because she was born without sin, but anyway. Yeah. He checks her heart rate and it's steady. She's not lying. She's a virgin. She says she had a dream where an angel told her that Matt Murdock would protect the baby. Specifically, Matt Murdock, Daredevil. Yeah. So somehow she knows that Matt is Daredevil through the vision of an angel. She leaves the baby with Matt, trusting him with the future of the world. Okay. Because she believes this baby is reincarnated Jesus. So now he just has like this weird baby to look after. Jesus baby. Yeah, it's like a weird Jesus baby. Psychic thing. Matt calls Black Widow to help him out and he leaves her with the baby. Of course he does. While he goes to the office, his offices to check the hospital records, but turns up nothing of any use. The next day he gets visited by a mysterious man named Nicholas McCabe's or Maccabees. I think it might be supposed to be Maccabees because Kevin Smith is a very on the nose writer and Maccabees is like a Bible thing. Yeah. And he's asking about the child. He says the child isn't the Messiah, it's the Antichrist. Oh God. And then Matt should hand him over so that his group can kill the baby. That took a turn. Matt's like, well, no. And Maccabees says the longer the baby is in his care, the more bad things are going to happen to Daredevil. Oh God. Matt starts just thinking about it, thinking about it, and he seems kind of not in his right mind. And he collects the baby from Natasha and just chucks it off a roof. What? You can't do that! But Natasha jumps to save it. Good! And when she finds out that Matt thinks this baby is the Antichrist, she just bursts out laughing at how dumb he is. Yeah! Elsewhere, Foggy goes home with Lydia, and, like, home with Lydia. Oh, oh. The sexy times. The sexy times. And Matt goes back to his apartment with the baby still Black Widow and finds that Karen's there. Okay. And she's discovered that after all of her years doing drugs and like porn and like illegal stuff. Yeah. She has AIDS. This is a fucking joke. I know that's like a serious thing, but like, is this just give women every single possible negative thing you can think of? Well, one thing, one thing that becomes a pattern that should be very apparent is bad things happen to the women in Matt Murdock's life. Yeah, like, I got that. So Matt doesn't have much time to deal with Karen because he gets a call that Foggy's been arrested for Lydia's murder. Okay. According to him, they were making out. She <laughs> turned into a demon. Oh, Jesus. Jumped out the window. 
And when he looked, she was there, normal person, dead on the ground. And to the police, it looks like Foggy threw her out the window. Is this an episode of Supernatural? Like, do they take... Is this where they get their storylines from? <laughs> Does this happen in Supernatural? Shit like that happens all the time, except not with Matt, with the Sam character. Oh. Everyone he touches dies. So Matt gets told by his and Foggy's boss, Foggy's mother, that their phone won't represent Foggy. Okay. Because it's just, it'll seem like nepotism. Yeah. So Matt quits... He goes to vent his frustration on some criminals, but gets caught in a, like an ambush and knocked out. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Like, it's like the the person being attacked was actually in cahoots with the people attacking them. Yeah, so yeah. So they could get animal. Meanwhile, Maccabees is popping onto Matt's for a cuppa with Karen. Oh. And he's kind of a dick and he makes you realise that, well, if you've had AIDS all this time, what does that mean about Matt? Oh, no. And... Like you'd, you'd, you'd think she'd have realised that by now. Right? Yeah. He, like, if I found out I had any sort of sexually transmitted disease, my first thought would be, oh shit, Helen. Yeah. Do so, you? I don't. <laughs> We're not talking about this on the podcast. <laughs> so Matt, who was ambushed and kidnapped, wakes up in a completely empty room and is greeted by Baal. Okay. Right, is this a giant man? Sorry. No, he's like a demon. He's like a giant demon man. Yeah. Who says that his group are working to bring about the Antichrist. Yeah. And they want to know where the baby is. Why are they bringing about the Antichrist? Because they're evil and stuff. Because that's what evil people do. Yeah. There are different levels of evil. Matt fights his way out. and But like, obviously, look at that dude. He's obviously... Why would that dude not want to bring about the Antichrist? <laughs> he just looks like a giant. But look at his face. and He's got like horns. He is terrifying. Yeah. Matt fights his way out and hooks back up with Black Widow who stars the baby. Matt's flipping out now over this baby being evil because these these two groups that are fighting over the baby. And he attacks Natasha, steals the kid, and heads to his mother's church. Right. He wakes up to his mother looking after the child and for the first time he gets her to admit that she is his mother. Mm-hmm. They get into an argument and Matt breaks down at her feet after yeah. a stressful few days. He's had a hard time. Matt meets back up with Karen in the church and they get into an argument that drives her running away. Meanwhile, Maccabees has hired someone to retrieve the baby from Matt, but this person is under strict orders not to kill either Matt or the baby. That's good. It's him. Who is it? Is it? I want to say Bullseye. Yes, Bullseye. Yes, Bullseye. I was like, that's going to be a more simple name. <laughs> but then I was like, no, no, it's Bullseye, and it's. So Matt goes to visit Doctor Strange while Karen goes back to the church to kind of talk to Matt's mother. And for some reason I put in a picture of Doctor Strange. You know who Doctor Strange is? He's really, really cool. For now, until the movie comes out. Until he's fucking ruined. So Matt goes to Doctor Strange to see if he has any insight on this baby being possibly supernatural. And Strange notices somewhere that Matt has been drugged with a toxin. Okay. So he uses his magic to cleanse it of him. Oh no. And Matt feels like cleansed and pure and not angry for the first time in days. Is he going to quit his job? Is he going to become a regular person? He's already quit his job. No, like at his superhero job. No. But at some point in the past few days, Matt's been drugged with a toxin, which has made him act all irrational around this baby. <sighs> Doctor Strange summons Mephisto. Yes. To find out if the biblical apocalypse is nigh, and Mephisto says no, and then implies that Matt's mother is in trouble. Oh no. So Matt rushes back to the church, and almost everyone's dead. Jesus Christ. With balls I waiting for him. Literally. They have a fight. And in the background, Karen Bage and Sister Maggie are still alive. Maggie urges Karen to run and get help. But Karen grabs the kid and tells Bullseye to let Matt go. And she'll give him the baby. And it's a really cool fight. It's one of the best bits in the comic. Because Matt throws one of his billy clubs at Bullseye. Yeah. And it hits Bullseye right in the teeth. So Bullseye like, grabs the teeth and just like flicks them back at Matt. <gasps> That's really cool. But Bullseye now has one of Daredevil's billy clubs. Oh no. So Karen goes, I'll give you this baby, just leave Matt alone. She gives over the baby, but it's a baby Jesus doll. While Sister Maggie is trying to get out of the side door. Fuck. But the baby starts crying. She's like a corrupt nun. No. She's trying to get the baby away from Bullseye. Oh, okay, right, yeah. yeah. So the baby starts crying. Bullseye takes the baby and says he's going to leave. But he's like, oh yeah, one more thing, I've still got your billy club. Throws it back. 
hits Karen in the chest. Oh no. Stabs her, kills her. Nice. So Karen Page is dead. Amazing. You're not even like angry anymore, <laughs> you're just like, of course. You're like, oh fucking course this has happened. What else did I expect? <laughs> After a brutal grieving process, Matt shakes down Turk, remember Turk? Yes. To find out where Maccabees is. He storms his skyscraper office and he's attacked by hand ninjas. Remember the hand? I do. But it turns out they're not ninjas, they're like homeless people dressed up like hand ninjas. Of course. He gets in an elevator, but the elevator starts to descend down into hell. <laughs> As he's being dragged in by Karen's soul, That's amazing. he's pulled out by Baal back into the building, and Baal tells him that he's Matt's guardian angel. Li- right. Literally his guardian angel. Okay. Matt, however, realises that Baal is just another man in a costume and takes him out with a nerve punch. Matt makes his way to the top floor where Maccabees reveals himself as... Him. Do you know who that is? I can't remember. That is Mysterio. Oh, right, yeah. Master of Illusion, Master of Special Effects. Yes. I'm actually confident this has been an entire Supernatural season. I'm not joking. Okay. So, Mysterio gets his monologue as per... Yeah, obviously. He explains that he's a special effects whiz named Quentin Beck. Nice. Angry at his relegation to second stringer among the villain community. And it turns out that a lifetime of playing around with gases and liquids and chemicals to make his special effects have given him terminal cancer. Oh, oh that's sad. So he decides he wants to take out Spider-Man. But at this point, Sp- like Spider-Man isn't Peter Parker's Sp- Spider-Man. isn't his Spider-Man. Yeah. It's Peter Parker's clone. Oh, okay, right. Which we'll get into at some point. It's a whole mess of yeah. Spider-Man shit. So he's like, you know what? I'm going to move on to Daredevil. I fought him once and he's kind of like a second stringer like me. Yeah. So he bought the information from Kingpin about everything Kingpin had about who Daredevil was and set about his plan using Matt's Catholicism against him with all the demon baby stuff. Christ. He set it all up. He got the girl pregnant while she was still a virgin. Foggy killing the lady was all a hallucination. Well, not hallucination. She, she did die. But that was because of Mysterio and Karen Page having AIDS. Like Karen, Karen didn't have AIDS. Oh, yes. She's still dead. She's still dead, but... It was, it was part of Mysterio's thing to try and ruin Daredevil's life. Daredevil beats Mysterio up and takes his helmet off. He just sees a broken man with kind of the the, the oxygen up his nose. And, oh. and refuses to play Mysterio's games, calling him B-movie material. Oh god! And saying that someone like Kingpin tried to ruin his life and did a much better job than Mysterio ever did. Yeah. He breaks Mysterio for never having an original thought in his head. Mysterio opens the door so Matt can get the baby, and then shoots himself in the head. Oh. Because there's a there's a Spider-Man story called uh, Craven's Last Hunt mm-hmm. that ends with Craven killing himself. So Mysterio goes, "I stole this one too from Craven," and shoots oh, himself in the Jesus. head. Jesus. So Mysterio's dead. Days later, Karen's funeral takes place and her life insurance pays out a lot of money to Matt. Like, tons of money. Aww. He meets up with Spider-Man and they reminisce over all the girlfriends they've had that have died. <laughs> oh, that's really sad. Matt and Foggy use the money that Karen left to them to reopen Nelson and Murdoch as Matt heads to confession for the first time since this whole thing started. I feel very sad for it. So in between this, there's a story about a lady named Echo. Yeah, cool. We're not going to cover it really because we've only got so much time in this episode. But she's deaf, she's a Native American. She's raised by Kingpin after her father, who was Kingpin's friend, was killed. She was trained to hate Daredevil because she was told that Daredevil killed her father. All right. And she's got, I can't remember what it's called, it's... She can see something and she can do it. Oh, that's cool. So she's got that sort of memory. There, like, there's a miscommunication eventually. Like, there's some romance between her and Daredevil. In the end, she finds out that Kingpin is a monster. She's been playing her since she was like a tween, and she shoots Kingpin in the face. Yeah, damn right. It doesn't kill him, but it does blind him. Good enough. Which is important. Does that make him empathise? No. No, not at all. He's still heartless. So then we there's another story about a villain named Leapfrog. It's a cool name. And there's a story by Bob Gale, who's the guy that wrote Back to the Future. Oh. So I read once, then never read again. So I can't, I couldn't tell you what happened in it. But then Brian Michael Bendis comes on. Okay. 
So the star bandits is run. A mobster named Sammy Silk. Yeah. Returns to New York after having to leave for a while for like waiting for the heat to die down. And he requests that Kingpin do something about this lawyer that's making trouble in his father's business. Yeah. Matt Murdock. Kingpin says a flat out no without explanation, like, we don't mess with Murdock. Yeah. And Silk and when Silk protests, Kingpin gets irate telling him that no one touches the lawyer. A month later, Silk's playing poker and he hasn't let his beef with Murdoch and Kingpin go. He gets called over to sit with the lonely man drinking at the end of the bar. Oh. Richard Fisk. Oh, okay. Kingpin's son. Yeah. Three months later, Matt Murdoch is attacked on the courthouse steps by Nitro. Do you remember Nitro? I do. And as Daredevil, Matt chases him down and hands him over to the cops. He talks to Foggy, who was hospitalised in the blast, about how few people know that Matt Murdoch is Daredevil. But Kingpin's one of them. Because when Nitro attacked, he was explicitly attacking Matt Murdoch. Yeah. It wasn't like a I'm going after Daredevil situation. So Daredevil confronts Kingpin, but Fisk has no idea who's behind it, and he's telling the truth. Because Matt has uh, the lie detector thing. Yeah, he's got the situation going on. Matt gets a letter from Electra telling him he has an open bounty on his head. A oh, letter? Yeah. A letter? You can, not, you can read the... Not like a... What? Not like a phone call? No. They're very, they're very distant. Okay. He's got a bounty on his head. Half a million dollars for whoever can kill Matt Murdock. Ooh. Specifically, Matt Murdock. Not Daredevil. Mm-hmm. Matt runs the gauntlet of two or three assassination attempts in a row, but what he doesn't know is that Bullseye's in town keeping tabs on him. That's not going to end well. Daredevil blazes through the underworld trying to find out who's got a hit on him as Matt Murdock, and he tracks down someone who knows something. He says it is Kingpin, but through an intermediary. Right, okay. Like a guy who knows a guy. Yeah. Matt goes back to Fisk and tells him that if it's not you, then someone in your organisation is speaking for you without you knowing. Ooh. Kingpin is confronted by Sammy Silk, who informs him that although he may never have not meant it, he became a joke when he started tangling with superheroes. Oh. And he turned, like, he, he forgot what it, what it meant to be like a mob boss. Yeah. And that now he's blind, he's weak, and he's open for takeover. Yeah. Kingpin protests, but is stabbed in the back, literally, by all his lieutenants. Nice. Just like Caesar. That's cool. Vanessa Fisk receives word of her husband's death. And he's actually still alive. But the men still loyal to him leaked his death to keep him safe. Yeah. Vanessa demands to know who did this to her husband and demands to know that if her son was among them. Matt tracks down Sammy Silk's posse to this bar, but it's deserted, save for one dead man in the back office and a very particular smell in the air. That of Vanessa Fisk. Does she have a smell? Well, like... Like a perfume. Like a perfume. I think the specific smell is patchouli oil and mink. That's a quite a specific smell, yeah. yeah. She's a fancy lady. Yeah, and he's got super He's got super smell. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she's been going around taking out everyone involved with her husband's nice. assassination attempt. Vanessa confronts her son, and after he pleads for forgiveness, she kills him, and then gives the order to her lieutenant. Throughout New York, almost simultaneously... Everyone involved in the hit on Kingpin is taken out, except for Silk, who gets away. Okay. He makes it to the FBI offices, where, for protection, he trades the information that Daredevil is Matt Murdock. No. The FBI call a meeting where they put together everything that's just gone on and piece together Murdock's origin from what's public record. So right. Like, it's public record that, as a kid, Matt Murdock was struck by radiation. Yeah, like, that's it's the public co- record sort of his... thing that gets documented. Yeah. It's public record that his father was killed for not throwing a fight these are the hallmarks of a superhero origin and they also know that a lot of his file is classified by S.H.I.E.L.D. oh yeah that's a bit suspicious the FBI director instead demands that Murdoch be left alone because whether he is or isn't Daredevil he's not their case the mob is yeah a few days later Foggy's getting his morning paper when he sees the front page of the Daily Globe which is pulp hero of Hell's Kitchen is blind lawyer Oh no. It's on the front page all over New York. Oh no, everyone knows. That Matt Murdock is Daredevil. Oh no. But he can't. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. Matt wakes up to press swarming outside his brownstone as Foggy pulls up and delivers a statement thoroughly denying and refuting the Globe's claims. Turns out one of the FBI guys wasn't happy with the Daredevil lead being filed away and told his lady friend who works at the Globe to impress her and to get paid for it as well. Nice. Good work. Matt wants to come clean, but Foggy dismisses it. He works both sides of the law as Matt Murdock and Daredevil, 
and he'll get disbarred and arrested if he admits to it. Yeah. Instead, Foggy suggests that maybe it's just time to retire. Foggy tries to make Matt see reason and see how much pain being Daredevil has brought him, how many people he's lost. But Matt doesn't want to listen and goes out as Daredevil to clear his head. Oh no. Over at the Daily Bugle, yeah. Jay Jonah Jameson is furious that they got their asses kicked by the Globe on this exclusive. But both Ben Yurick and Peter Parker speak up to say that they know who Daredevil is and it's not Matt Murdock. Jameson demands that Yurick tell him who Daredevil is or he's fired. But Ben fires back that through his relationship with Daredevil, he's broken dozens of more important stories and he's not going to out such a high profile source. Yeah. Ben meets up with Peter outside and they talk about how they didn't know each other knew and they speculate on how Matt's doing. Oh. We care about him. While Matt is out, the street outside his house where all the press are is attacked by Dr. Calvin Zabo. Okay. Also known as Mr. Hyde. He's really cool. He's exactly Mr. Hyde. He's really cool. As in Dr. Jekyll Yeah. And I'm pretty sure he's in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. now, played by the mayor of Portlandia. Oh, right. Okay. It could be wrong. And I think in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., he is Quake's father. I don't know I don't, okay. watch, I don't watch it so he shows up at Daredevil's house being or well, at Matt Murdock's house being like Murdock I'm going to beat you up but Spider-Man shows up to put the boots to him and Daredevil shows up to help and it's really cool he just grabs you know one of those American post boxes like the circuit the ones that go like that yeah like he grabs it and just like hits him like it's a steel chair that's amazing that's really cool Spider-Man helps Daredevil get away from the press and then Matt goes into hiding for a month a month? Yeah. What does he do for a month? He goes to Japan. Oh, cool. Good shout. Matt returns from his month in Japan and calls a press conference, categorically denying the Globe's claims that he's Daredevil, and he fires a million dollar libel suit against the Globe for their claims. Huh? He can do that. He's he, got the skills. He also hires Luke Cage. Yeah. Luke Cage. And Jessica Jones. Yes. Who have both been in Netflix TV shows as well. Yeah. As bodyguards to keep up appearances yeah because he doesn't need a bodyguard but Cage knows that he's Daredevil but Jess doesn't yeah Black Widow shows up and tries to convince him to leave this life behind and join her as an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. but Matt declines oh. Vanessa Fisk meets with Matt Murdock in private and gives him the name of the man that leaked his identity to the press who was it? it's just the FBI guy just the FBI guy yeah that shitty FBI guy oh fair enough kind of has a going away present as the Fisks are leaving New York for good Vanessa's dismantled Fisk's enterprise took all the money and she's taking Wilson out of the country to recuperate she's done well Matt gets Luke to take him home where he heads to the roof to clear his head and finds waiting for him Electra why is she there? I don't know I think like a, your life's gone to shit hi you like kind of help yeah well actually what happened is Black Widow got in touch with her via shield and said Matt might need to speak to her but she gets to change her heart and bails because Matt's a bit of a he, he's a bit of a dick on his ex-girlfriends yeah he doesn't seem like the greatest guy of women next day Matt and Foggy are visited by the Globe's lawyer who tells them in no uncertain terms he's looking forward to thrashing them in court nice at night Matt takes a trip to the FBI agent's apartment and, t- and intimidates him from the window from the window yeah like the guy wakes up and he just sees Daredevil stuff outside his window yeah that's really cool and I the, do that and the next day the Globe and its publisher, Mr. Rosenthal, are ready to settle because their source of the FBI is now in a much less uh, cooperative mood. Nice. Matt manages to talk them up to a $75 million settlement Jesus. and an apology in the paper. He also makes sure that they donate this money to the National Endowment of the Blind and the Hell's Kitchen Restoration Fund. Oh, that's cute. And makes them promise that no Globe staffers will lose their jobs due to the settlement. That's really nice. Mr. Rosenthal asks to speak to Matt alone, and Matt can barely keep a straight face at this point. So the publisher retracts his offer, and he says, I'm taking you to court no matter what. Oh, I just no. don't like you. That's no reason. Well, still, like, the guy is right. Matt is Daredevil, and Matt is lying about it. Like, Matt is in the wrong here. Yeah, but he's also got, like, he's got shit at stake. Like, yeah. he's doing a good thing, and people are trying to ruin that. Yeah. And. The guy's point is win or lose on his on his side. Matt Murdock is Daredevil? Question mark is out there now. 
Yeah. It's part of the conversation. Whenever you mention Matt Murdock or Daredevil, you're going to think of the other. Yeah. Uh... So in the Bronx, two gangbangers are robbing a pawn shop. P A W N. Yeah. When they get stopped by the police, one of them shoots the officer. The White Tiger. Yeah. Shows up, and they throw a television at him, which he catches, but they make their escape. When more backup arrives, they, all they see is White Tiger holding a TV stood over a dead cop. He did it. Why is it called the White Tiger? Because he's got the tiger amulet. That gives him his power. Oh, right, and he's white. He's not. No, like, his costume. Pardon? His costume's white. His costume's white. He's not. He's called Hector Alea. Okay. So Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Iron Fist. Iron Fist is really cool. Iron Fist also getting his own TV show. Oh, cool. But are they just making Netflix shows about everyone possible? Well, the Netflix shows are more street level. Yeah. So it's Daredevil, then Jessica Jones, then Luke Cage, then Iron Fist. And then they're getting their own Avengers sort of thing. Ah, oh, right. Okay. So they're doing those four TV shows. Then they're doing a fifth TV show called The Defenders. The Defenders. Which is going to be the four of them. That's cool. Is there enough on each of them to make a TV show? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I guess it's been going for a while. Yeah. And Luke Cage and Iron Fist going back. They're really interesting characters because they both capitalised on the two big trends of the 70s, which were martial arts films with Iron Fist. Yeah. And black exploitation with Luke Cage. Oh, yeah. And then when those trends started to fail... Like all trends do eventually. Yeah. Both books started to falter. So what they did was they took these two characters who just don't really go together and put them in one book as a team. Because okay. Luke Cage's gimmick originally was he's Luke Cage, hero for hire. Oh, right. And then Iron Fist joined him and they became the heroes for hire. That's cool. So Luke Cage and Iron Fist, they ask Matt to take the White Tiger case. Yeah. But Matt says like it's the last thing he needs, his life's already too much of a circus and this is like the trial of the century. Yeah. They convince him at least to at least meet with Hector, which he does, and realising that he is innocent, Matt takes the job. Hector's wife wants to leave him because he'd promised to hang up the white tiger identity and had for years. But came out of retirement two days before the shooting. Oh no. Matt convinces her not to though, because that'll make things worse at the trial. Yeah. It's really not a good idea. After the first day of his trial, it goes well, and Matt calls up several character witnesses like Reed Richards and Doctor Strange, but while Hector's on the stand, the prosecution brings up Hector's crumbling marriage, and Hector flips out in a rage, severely damaging his reputation in the eyes of the jury. He- the next day, Hector is found guilty, Oh no! and he tries to make a break for it, but gets gunned down on the courthouse steps. Oh, no. Matt tracks down the kid who actually shot the cop, and convinces him to turn himself in, but it's several hours too late. Oh, no. The White Tiger is dead. Oh, God. Weeks later, Daredevil's swigging by, going about his business, when he saves a, a blind lady from being hit by a truck. Okay. This blind lady's name is Miller Donovan. Okay, right. I wonder if she'll be important later. Probably. probably. She'll probably die. <laughs> Oof. I will promise you this. I will promise you that Miller Donovan does not die. Oh, okay. Does she become someone important? Yes. Ah, yes. But Finally. I won't promise you anything else about her. All I'll say is she doesn't die. Oh, no. Bad things happen to her. What's the name of the podcast? Oh, no. Why? She seems like a nice lady. I don't know anything about her, but she seems like a nice lady. She works for the Health Kitchen Restoration Fund, helping people in low-income housing find... People who need housing find housing. She's a nice person. So, later that day, Wilbur Day, aka Stiltman, yes. stops by to tell Matt that he's had enough, he's quitting, he's leaving, and he lets slip that that kind of Daredevil's number two villain, or not number two villain, maybe number three villain, the Owl. <gasps> yes! De- the owl's name <laughs> is Leyland Owlsley. <laughs> That's so dumb. Owlsley. And he's making moves dealing in MGH. Okay. Have you heard of human growth hormone? I have. MGH, what do you think MGH is? Mutant growth hormone. Mutant growth hormone. It's a drug 
that gives you superpowers for a few hours at a time. Right. A man makes his way through the low lash of New York searching for Owlsley, who is very mad that Daredevil's getting all up in his business. Because without Kingpin, it's kind of a power vacuum. Yeah. Everything's sort of thrown off and weird. Matt finds the owl, but when he gets there, the owl's lawyers are there waiting to tell him he's trespassing illegally, and they've got loads of recording devices on. Yeah. And if he keeps it up, they'll get the police on Matt Murdock. The next day, Miller heads to Matt's law office and thanks him for saving her life, even though he's like, what do you mean? I'm not Daredevil. (laughs) Still playing. Mr. Rosenthal, the publisher of The Globe, meets with his lawyer, who advises him to settle, because if it goes badly... Matt could end up owning the entire Rosenthal empire, including the paper itself. Oh, God. And not long after that, Rosenthal is found decapitated in his pool. Shit. Wow. Rosenthal's head was not just cut off, it was ripped off. Jesus Christ. And immediately the finger gets pointed at Matt. Why would he rip a man's head off? Matt meets with Miller in his office, and he's really taken with her. And although he continues to insist that he's not a daredevil, like, he kind of of says to her, "If if we go out... Like, you can't let anyone know that I'm dead. He finds out her full name, Miller Donovan, and that she works for Hell's Kitchen Housing Commission, helping poor people find jobs and homes. Uh. She asks him out on a date, and Matt says that he can't throw her into the blender that is his life. Oh, yeah. And Miller's response to that is basically, I'm a grown-ass woman, I can do up to the fuck I want. Yes! I like her. She's going to regret it, but I like her. (laughs) Not in this episode. (laughs) Well, eventually... Matt needs someone with less visibility than Daredevil to take on the owl. So Foggy suggests Luke Cage, but Luke's still pissed with Matt over the White Tiger trial and how badly it went. Yeah, I'd be. Matt goes to visit him and Luke says he doesn't like working for Matt because Matt's lying to the public and suing people about it. Matt asks Luke to help with the owl, but Luke rips into Matt saying, oh, my hands are tired, and Luke's like, fuck off, your hands are being tired. Basically. Luke leaves him with some advice that will be very influential shortly, where he says... Just take care of your backyard and leave the kingpins to the feds. Oh, yeah. Because Luke's like, use your super hearing and listen, is anyone in this building doing drugs? Is anyone in the block doing drugs? No, because I look after my backyard. Yeah. Right. And he suggests that Matt just focus on doing the same. And Matt and Miller go on their date and when they get home, the police have showed up to arrest Matt and oh, bring him God. in over Rosenthal's death. Matt and Miller they come back to find the police swarming all over his house and both of them get taken into questioning of course at the police station Matt can overhear the cops behind the glass and he's relieved to know that Miller hasn't told them anything about him being Daredevil I guess that's a that's a good advantage of the superhero yeah Matt gets questioned and one of the officers gets a little too rough ripping his shirt open to see if there's a costume underneath which there isn't wow so he, he gets to let go with the captain being like I'm so sorry I'm so sorry I'm so sorry the owl uses the current pressure on Murdoch due to the murder investigation and although he doesn't have anything to do with it puts the call out to round up all the Kingpin's old crews yeah and he's like now's the time bring everyone in yeah I'm, I'm the new Kingpin in prison Sammy Silk is bragging about how he ended up there and how he killed the Kingpin when he gets told his father is there to visit him Oh, okay. He heads in to meet his dad, but when he gets there, it is... Kingpin. Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin. Matt calls Miller to apologise about what happened and talks to Foggy about what the next move is. The Owl's base is raided by the FBI whilst making a new batch of MGH. And the Owl's like, I, I, I want to go in for protection. And the FBI are like, yeah, Sammy Suck just got murdered today, so... Are you... no, maybe not. Not today, son. Mm. The Owl tries to make a break for it, but Daredevil stops him and just beats the trash out of him. As Daredevil leaves, he overhears the FBI guys talking about how Wilson Fisk is back in the country. Uh, about to take his crown. So the remains of Kingpin's organisation are getting by just with small time drug deals when one of the lieutenants finds his entire family mur- murdered. Wow, that's a turn. He runs away and is confronted by Yakuza. Yeah. But saved by Typhoid Mary. Ah. Who is working with the Kingpin after he found her acting in a soap opera. And snapped her back to her murderous ways. Oh, God. She got out. She was free. (laughs) Kingpin tells the accuser leader to go back to Philadelphia and tell his bosses to stay there. Fisk puts the word out. Tomorrow, 10pm, Josie's bar. At the meeting, the FBI show up to see what Kingpin's up to, and he offers them damning evidence to put the hour away for good. And when they leave, Kingpin decides they need to do something to keep 
felt the FBI and Daredevil distracted yeah. from him. Miller starts questioning whether she wants to pursue a relationship with Matt after seeing firsthand the craziness of his life. She was warned. But her friend talks around, reminding her that she already knew that she was Daredevil, and saying like, "He's good looking. He's ripped. He's rich. He's a lawyer." He could do worse. Yeah, exactly. He's a catch. Kingpin heads to Bolivia to visit his consigliere who helped Vanessa dissolve the empire and get everyone out of the country. He's very angry that his right-hand man helped his wife break down his empire and helped her, help her vanish. He can't find Vanessa anywhere. Oh, Vanessa doesn't want nothing. Yeah. Go Vanessa. So Kingpin's got nothing. He's got no money, no empire. I like Vanessa. He kills his second hand, like his right-hand man. And resolves to burn himself up from the ground once again. Miller goes to visit Matt and the two go out for lunch with Jessica Jones escorting them as the bodyguard. Oh. When Typhoid Mary shows up and lights Matt on fire. Whoa! While Matt stops, drops and rolls, Jessica charges Mary and the two fight while Matt gets Miller to safety. Matt decides that he can't keep up appearances as not dead at all. While there are people in danger, but luckily Luke Cage had plans with Jess. And was in the area and helps turn the tide to help take Mary out. Oh, that's good. And at this point, Luke Cage and Jessica Jones are dating. Oh, that's cute. They spent so much time together, they don't yeah. hate each other anymore. The FBI take over the scene, and Agent Driver, who's kind of the lead investigator, yeah. tells Matt that it was Kingpin that sent Mary to distract them both while he's getting his house in order. Matt then has a full talk with Miller and tells him everything that's happened, everything that's likely to happen about all the women he's lost the two especially to Bullseye elsewhere Kingpin is meeting with someone who tells him that in order to cement his place back as the top dog Kingpin of New York it's a whole new game everyone knows Matt Murdock is dead or one out so that's not like a trump card in his back pocket Yeah. he needs to take out Matt Murdock once and for all and the man, this man offers to do it for him this man's name is it's him. Bullseye. Yeah. Looking different. I like it. That is based on Colin Farrell in the movie. Oh, right, yeah. Where he's got the Bullseye logo tattooed on his head. I like it. He seems more like actual menacing human yeah. than supervillain. Yeah. Matt heads out for the night on patrol, leaving Miller alone in his room, where she's confronted by Bullseye, who thinks he has it all to himself. Yeah. He doesn't know because Daredevil comes crashing back in and throws him out of a window. The two have like their fight to end all fights and Matt pins Bullseye to the ground, takes a rock and carves the tattoo oh, into his head. Oh, oh no! No! And he's like, this ring is for Electra. Oh, Jesus and Christ. And this ring is for Karen. No, that's horrible! Agent Driver shows up and Matt says that he's willing to come out as Daredevil to prosecute Bullseye. But Driver says they've got enough on Bullseye and they don't need it. Ugh. Matt returns home to comfort Miller. Oh. Are you okay? No. Like, all that shit happened, they're like, no, we've got enough on Bullseye, he's fine. Well, no, it's like, we're, we're going to take Bullseye away and arrest him and put him away forever. We've got enough on him, we don't need you to testify as Matt Murdock on top of that. Yeah, but like... Bulls are still going to do a whole bunch of shit. No, he's in jail. He's in jail. He's in jail forever. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> you learn so fast. <laughs> that doesn't mean shit. He's Bullseye. He's going to get out or something. So elsewhere in Hell's Kitchen, Kingpin is having a meeting establishing that he is in control. He orders that MGH is off the street and one of the men stands up to him saying, like, your time's passed. You've shown that you don't know what you're doing. We're in charge now, and we can take you out whenever you want. So Kingpin makes a phone call to have that man's wife raped and murdered on the spot. Not just just kill the man. Just, yeah, uh, destroy everything for him. At that point, a car comes crashing through the wall, taking everyone out, and out comes Daredevil. He and Wilson Fisk have a big fight, and I can't describe it really. It's beautifully drawn. It's not just Alex Maleev. It's They kind of get all the artists of Daredevil over the past 50 years. Oh. Well, not 50 years. 40 years because this is Daredevil number 50 oh right yeah nice it's uh it's like a massive art collaboration sort of yeah, thing yeah it's Daredevil volume 2 number 50 so like each page is a different artist as they go through the fight oh that's really cute I like that and then Matt gets the upper hand and he finally beats Wilson Fisk one on one right 
He puts Kingpin's unconscious body on the hood of a car and drives through the front of Josie's bar. Right. And he removes his mask to all the criminals. And he says, this is the rules now. If you need... If you're so stupid that you need a kingpin to report to, I am the kingpin. I am the new kingpin. Yes. From now on, there'll be no crime in Hell's Kitchen. He saw it out. Yeah. So he is the new kingpin. Nice. Good work. A year later, uh, Matt Murdock is the kingpin. It's like an open secret. Yeah. Like, everyone knows it, but you can't find a single person who's there to witness it. Yeah. Ben Yurik is meeting with someone and kind of putting together the events of the past 12 months. So following Matt's announcement, Daredevil went on a six-week campaign to rid crime from Hell's Kitchen. That's good. But Matt in his public life had just won the biggest class action damage settlement in the history of New York against the globe. Hundreds of millions of dollars and he gave every single cent back to Hell's Kitchen. Oh, and the lady. Yeah, and with the help. With the, the help. lady. What oh, lady. The, what I can't remember her name the Mi- Hell's Kitchen lady Miller yeah yeah she helped him figure out where to put it oh that's cute Matt's confronted by Peter Parker Luke Cage Stephen Strange and Reed Richards who tell him that he went too far why kind of taken over as the kingpin he crossed the line but Matt counters that it worked and he throws back Luke's advice of taking care of your own backyard yeah like cut out of the roots Matt instead says that they should follow his lead he's like Luke Cage you call Harlem Doctor Strange, The Village, Peter, Queens, like Reed, Manhattan. If everyone just calls one area, yeah. we'll sort it. Everyone's watching their own backyard. But then Peter Parker's like, because they're all angry that there's no crime in Hell's Kitchen anymore, but the crime has moved to Harlem and Queens. and So Peter's like, well, yeah, if we do that, they'll just move to Philadelphia. Yeah, they're just like pushing it like, around. Yeah. They tell him that they can't support him, and he storms off. The night before Ben's meeting in the diner with the mystery person, mm-hmm. Matt and Miller are walking through the city when Matt hears something and tells Miller to run home. Oh no. He's confronted by like a hundred Yakuza. Oh. Matt holds his own against the horde. Meanwhile, the FBI who are monitoring Matt have called back up and in the confusion, Matt manages to get away and hasn't been seen since. The person across the table from Ben confirms that everything he's just said is true and then you see that it's Miller who asks Ben Yurick to help her find her husband. Oh, okay. So in the intervening year, Matt and Miller have got married. Yeah. So Agent Driver and his partner, an agent named Angela Del Toro. Cool. Interrogate the accuser leader, but they get nothing. They sit in their car outside the courthouse and see him walk free, and then the accuser do a drive-by on their car. Del Toro makes it out, but Driver doesn't. Oh. The driver's dead. Ben tracks da- Ben Yurick tracks down Matt to the offices of the night nurse. Yeah. Who is a physician to superheroes throughout New York. Yeah. Matt has been shot and stabbed and is in bad shape, but alive and talking. Ben asks him point blank if he thinks that after everything over the past year with Karen and all that, maybe he's had a nervous breakdown. And Matt doesn't agree, but Ben piles up the evidence as Foggy enters and they're like, yeah, Matt dude's got a point. Oh no. It takes Matt a further nine days to recover from his injuries, and while he's out, the accuser are running wild. Matt heads over to Luke Cage's apartment, where Jessica Jones has since moved in, and is pregnant. Oh, okay. And nothing happens to that baby. That's a very fine baby. Good. She, they eventually get married. They have a kid. They name the name of Danielle after Iron Fist, who is called Danny. Oh, that's so cute. And everyone's happy. The end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So Matt admits to Luke that his life has spiraled out of control due to a nervous breakdown and together they recruit Spider-Man and Iron Fist to take down the accuser. Matt marches the leader right to the FBI and makes him admit to everything including the hit on Agent Driver. While Matt was gone, Miller found out about Karen Page and the nervous breakdown theory. So she leaves him. She's like, your marriage to me was part of your nervous breakdown. You weren't in your right mind when you married me and I don't want to be with you anymore. Oh no. So, after this, a man named Alexander Bontz gets out of prison. Yep. Bont was the kingpin before Fisk. Mm-hmm. And Matt Murdock was his lawyer. Oh, right. Bont arrives to a New York that looks completely unrecognisable from before he went to jail. His wife died long ago, and the man that was supposed to represent him in court was actually dead all along. 
Not good for him. He goes through a list of the people that are responsible for putting him in jail, killing them, with seeming hu- superhuman strength. Yeah. But this is this is an old dude. Yeah. This is an old old dude. He looks like you know when Johnny Knoxville puts on that old makeup. Yeah. It looks like that. That's weird. And those these deaths wind up in the life of Angela Del Toro. Oh. Driver's former partner. She asks she asks around and she pinpoints Bond at the scene of the crime, but she doesn't know how we how this old man is like killing people. Yeah. She goes to Matt and she reveals that she doesn't care about the case or about Daredevil anymore. And she's inherited the white tiger amulets from her uncle. Right. And she wants Matt to help her figure out why superheroes do it. So she's going to become a superhero? Yes. Matt's hesitant to even end saying the conversation. Because if he does, he's admitting he's Daredevil and the FBI can take him down. Yeah. But she says that she's quitting the FBI and Matt knows she's telling the truth. He tells her to meet him on the roof that night to talk more. And if she can't get onto the roof with the amulets, she should stop before she even begins. They spend the night training as she learns the limits of her abilities as the new White Tiger. That's good. So Alexander Bond gets to Melvin Potter. Do you remember Melvin Potter? Yes. The gladiator? Yeah. And strong arms him into kidnapping Matt or he'll kill um, Melvin's daughter. Yeah. So Matt gets kidnapped and tied to a chair and unmasked and he makes Melvin just beat the shit out of him while he videotapes it. He then throws Matt out onto the street, maskless. And he tells Melvin to kill him, but Del Toro comes flying in and stops him. Bond flips out and throws Matt around in a fit of rage, but his heart gives out and he explodes. Oh. He was getting his powers from MGH, oh God. but it was too much for his body to handle. Oh no. So this next story is a weird one. Oh, Still wow. Bendis and Malieve, but it gets weird. This is one, I got a, an IM from Chris saying, good luck with that. <laughs> Because it's told through multiple narrators and it's a non-linear timeline. It's a church in the Heart of Hell's Kitchen and it's a support group that's been set up for those that have been affected by Daredevil. Oh, right. So kind of each issue, a different person in that support group tells their story. Yeah. So I've tried to piece it together as much as I can. But it's... Uh, I've not pieced it together in the order it happens in the issues. I've tried to piece it together in a way that makes sense to recap to you. Right. So... One of the guys in this room says that he knows secrets about Matt Murdock outside of him being Daredevil, but he wants to hear everyone else's secrets before he tells them Matt's. One of the women there, her husband, turned out to be a serial killer oh. who was taken down by Daredevil. She blames her husband's descent into madness on a demonic possession. Right. Because she came down to see if he wanted like a sandwich or something, and she saw this creepy little demon baby oh. like sat on his shoulder. Oh god, that's weird. Slow whispering in his ear. This makes one of the other women really angry because she was the survivor of that lady's husband. Oh god. That was saved by Daredevil. And she's like, no, don't blame this on demonic possession. He was an evil man who killed a lot of people and nearly killed me. A third woman s- s- stands up and she says, she pulls out like a piece of paper and she says, that demon baby, did it by any chance look like this? Oh, oh, that's horrible. <laughs> Jesus, what's that? <laughs> Why does his face look like that? <laughs> that's horrible. <laughs> oh, it's got such a gross face. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, okay, let's carry on, let's carry on. Uh, it's, like, it's like a troll. You know, the trolls are like the hair. Yeah. And then they've got that, like, that weird, like, Sort of suckily face. Oh no, it's horrible! Oh, it's got teeth! Oh god, burn it! So, this woman, this picture, her daughter drew that a week ago, right before she gouged her own eyes out and killed herself. Oh god, it just gets worse. So, earlier that day, earlier in the day that the girl killed herself, right? the girl was saved during a bank robbery by the jester. Right, yeah. That woman, the mother, she worked with Miller. Oh. When she got a call about the robbery, which Miller was like, Matt, there's a robbery, you need to go fix yeah, it. Yeah, that's all that. And Matt eventually rescued the daughter, who went straight to her room, drew the picture and killed herself. Oh my god. The man with the secret starts laughing and points out that no one has noticed in the support group, Matt Murdock is there. He's there? He's like, yeah, I got affected by Daredevil. 
This whole thing has been very hard for me. Matt admits that he's there to get the shady man. All right. And okay. tells him that if he tries to run, he'll chase him down. Yeah. Matt tells a story about what happened in the bank. He took down the jester, who was stronger and more powerful than he should have been. Yeah. The jester tries to hold the girl hostage, but he starts freaking out and vomits up the demon baby. Ah! Who runs away? It's the demon baby. The, the, the baby was vomited up and yeah. then the baby runs away. Yeah. Oh God, that's horrible. That's the worst thing. Turns out Jester had fallen in with this man, the shady man, who had recently moved to Hell's Kitchen. And he's studied black arts and ancient religions, but he doesn't really know what he's doing. He accidentally summoned the demon baby creature and came to church for a kind of spiritual confession and stumbled upon this Daredevil meeting. And he's more scared than he's letting on. The man runs away and Daredevil corners him in his house. The demon baby tries to get out ah. by being vomited out again. But the man manages to shoot himself under the chin. Yeah. Oh my god. And there's the image of the man. What do you think of that? Oh, it's creepy as hell. The baby looks really weird. Yeah, this is a really weird story in the middle of like this crime drama. The baby looks so, so weird. Matt returns to the church to let the people know it's over and to let them get the closure that they need. I feel sorry for all of them. Ben Yurik visits with Kingpin, who's in jail, at Fisk's request because he wants to make a deal with the FBI, but he wants it to also be like front page news. Yeah. Fisk is willing to give up everything he has for disclosure on Matt Murdock, but in return he wants a full pardon and a plane ride out of the country and his remaining assets returned to him. All right. And in return, he's going to give the FBI everything he has on Matt Murdock as Daredevil. Meanwhile, back in New York, Daredevil's doing amazing. He's just been voted the number one costumed hero <laughs> in New York. Amazing. And it's starting to look like Matt's made it out the other side. That's when Miller comes back and Foggy goes out to leave them to chat. Oh, no. As he does, he sees the evening edition of the Daily Bugle with the headline, Kingpin tells all the truth about Murdock revealed. Oh, no. Did she do that? They do do that. Miller? Yeah. No, the Kingpin did. Kingpin tells all. Yeah, but like... No, Miller's not done anything. Okay. Agent Del Toro tries to convince her colleagues in the FBI not to go after Matt, but her boss fires her. Uh Uh-oh. Electra is in Chicago on an assassination job, and she sees the front page. Black Widow tries to get S.H.I.E.L.D. to help, but Nick Fury's not in charge anymore, because remember that story we covered? Yeah. And... Maria Hill it doesn't want to help no but Maria Black Widow heads to Nelson and Murdoch and Foggy's there but neither of them know where Matt is turns out Matt is in Miller's hotel room oh where they've been all night yeah when Electra drops by okay Electra gets Matt to turn on the news to see that his life as he knows it is over and the two of them are like bound off in costume to try and talk the FBI director meets with Fisk to get his proof that Murdoch is Daredevil and Kingpin reveals that he has a file that he refers to as the Murdoch Papers which he's kept hidden for safekeeping but he's not the only person that knows about it. Alright, okay. So the FBI needs to get there before anyone else does. But are they going to? Fisk whispers in his ear who else knows about it and the director immediately calls for reinforcements. Oh god, everyone knows. No, very few people know. Two people know. Everyone's going to know now. Well, two people know where the Murdoch papers are. Yeah. So Electra reveals to Matt that she helped Kingpin compile the Murdoch papers, and Black Widow shows up who's not happy to see Electra, since Electra has taken over the hand. Oh. The three of them, though, team up to track down the files before anyone else can get them. They head to the rooftop across from the office where the papers are, and they're joined by the new White Tiger, and the yeah. Toro. Daredevil asks if anyone else knows about the papers. Like, because Lecture says, I know about papers and like there are all the people that know about the papers. And right now I want you to look at the page that I've got ready on the iPad. Oh no. It's just a really cool page. Nothing bad happens in it. Okay, that's right. Read that page. Does this? Yeah. Is that it? From the top. <gasps> okay. That is one of my favourite pages in comics. Obviously because the people listening don't know what it is. Matt says, who else knows about this? One other. And Matt says, who? The next panel is the exact same shot, but Matt catching a playing card right in front of Electra's neck. And the next panel is Matt saying, never mind, figured it out. And she looks terrified. Uh, and that means it is? 
It's, it's Bullseye. It's Bullseye. He's back, yes. Why, yes, he's cute. I like him. I don't, I don't like his, I don't like his, like, persona. Yeah. But he's a good villain. Yeah, it's one of my favourite pages, absolutely. So Bullseye roars in on a motorcycle, throwing cards all over the place. Electra and Bullseye fight while Daredevil just knocks out Angela and kicks her off the roof into some garbage. Nice. Because she's not ready to face Bullseye and Matt's not going to put her up to that. How did he get out of jail? That's a good point. He probably like flick things at the bars and like come open. I might, I might have missed that at some point. Matt urges Natasha to go protect Miller and joins the fight against Bullseye. The three of them fight out onto the street and Bullseye starts losing. He runs away and just gets hit by a bus, Regina George style. Wow. As they stand over Bullseye's limp yet alive body, Daredevil is shot in the shoulder from miles out. Oh, God. By a mercenary by the name of Pal- Paladin. Oh, cool. In exchange for the FBI wiping Paladin's records clean. Yeah. The FBI rush in to arrest Daredevil, but he's gone. At that point, Kingpin reveals that there are no Murdoch papers. What? He made it up. He just bullshit the entire thing. But it was bait to draw Matt out and put him in a situation of course it was. where he's forced to obstruct justice to protect his own neck. And if the FBI can find Matt Murdock, he'll have the same bullet wound as Daredevil. Oh, that's, that's kind of clever, I guess. Injured two pairs goes to the night nurse, and although Kingpin doesn't know where that is, Ben Yurick does. Oh, shit, yeah. The FBI compel Ben to tell them where Matt is or face jail time, but not before Ben finally gets a few licks in on the Kingpin. Yep. Of course. Black Widow and Miller show up as a night nurse and they're followed by Electra's army of ninjas. Yeah. The hand helped Matt heal with their magic as the FBI surround the building. Electra sends the hand out to engage the FBI as Luke Cage and Iron Fist show up and they start fighting the hand. Matt walks out maskless and tells everyone to stop fighting. <gasps> He's arrested and taken to jail. Oh. At the trial, the judge asks Matt for his plea but Matt apologises to Foggy and makes a break for it. Ah, okay. He meets up with Natasha, who takes him to Miller and gets him started on a new life in Paris. Months later, Matt wakes up to find Miller dead with a plane card in her throat. Oh. With Bullseye stood at the foot of his bed. Oh no. He fights Bullseye out onto the streets of Paris and finally kills him. He's dead? Yeah. Is he actually probably dead? Like, does he come back? Matt makes his way to Japan, where as Lois Depp, he rekindles his romance with Electra and joins the hand. He joined the hand. No, he doesn't. It was all a daydream. Oh, God. The judge asks Matt for his plea, and Matt pleads not guilty. And they try to get him out on bail, but he's even a flight risk and taken to Rikers Island to await trial. Meanwhile, Wilson Fisk walks out a free man on all charges and is immediately arrested because one of his subordinates came forward with evidence and admitted to witness Fisk murder a colleague with his bare hands. Christ. Matt gets taken to prison where he walks past Wilson Fisk, the owl, oh, hammerhead, everyone. among others. It's like a walk of shame. And he takes his seat in his cell. Oh, no. And that's what's done for this week. Okay. So I'm going to assume he gets out of jail. We'll see. But one thing I like about Daredevil is it's something that... It's more of a 21st century thing, but each writer tries to leave the next writer with a challenge. Yeah, like, get yourself out of that one. And we'll see you next week when we do Ed Brubaker. It's like... Because that's where Bendis leaves, and then Ed Brubaker and Michael Lark are going to come in next week with Matt in jail. Is it just going to be the entire thing set in jail? Not the entire thing. I think it's fairly obvious. But it's a cool status quo. Yeah, yeah. So Matt's in jail with all these super criminals. It's going to be fun. So that is Daredevil for this week. We don't have a bonus segment this week, we don't have anything to watch, or we're not going to rank Daredevil on the list yet. So I put the call out for listener questions. Okay, right. We have one, two, three, four, five, six listener questions. That's a lot. Some of them are just for me. Some of them are for both of us. Okay. Some of them you can you can try and answer if you want, but I think you've not read enough comics to get there. Yeah. Not to be patronising, but okay, let's start. The first question comes from at Seth underscore Bingo, who asks simply, "Teen sidekicks, yay or nay?" Yay. Yay. Yay always. Robin, Kid Flash, Bucky. Kid Flash. Aqualad. Yeah. Aqualad. Yeah. You love Aqualad. Wonder Girl. I'm a big fan of Teen Titans, Young Justice, all teen superheroes. 
from what like not as much as I used to be because when I was a teen I really liked Teen Super it was like Blue Beetle and stuff yeah but I still have a big fondness for Teen Super Heroics I, th- I think they're important in appealing to you yeah because the reason why Robin was created was because so, like little kids can't really identify with Batman but like a little kid will read a Batman comic and like oh imagine if I was best friends with Batman yeah, like that would be dope. And Robin is best friends with Batman. That'd be so cool. Exactly. So yeah, a big yay for Team Massive Psychics. yay. Second question comes from at Luke who's talking. Okay, yeah. That's L U C Luke because he's called Luke. This I, is, this I is, know. This is this is my friend Luke Jordan. Yeah, I'm aware. Luke, Luke's a very good friend. I've been to many a comic convention with Luke. I've studied many a line for signings and sketches with Luke. And this is more for me. I don't think you'll be able to answer this one. Okay. And he says, if you were to create your own battle world, what universes slash pieces of comics history would you want to see clash? Battle world is, the, you know, the, the new Secret Wars comic. Yes. It's like Earth's been reshaped and each country on this new Earth is from a different like Marvel a, story. Like a sort of collage of other bits. It's like if every country was... A different alternate universe. Oh, that's cool. So you've got like Age of Apocalypse over here, and you've got Days of Future Past over here, and you've got World War Hulk over here. That's cool. It seems like it's going to be interesting. Some of them are more interested than others. Yeah, I was saying that. Like, I'm looking forward to Chris Burnham and Ramon Villalobos on Ease for Extinction. That's going to be really cool. So, yeah, I, I had to think about this, and I've chosen a few from Marvel and DC because DC are doing something very similar with a story called Convergence might as well just like mush it all into yeah. one so first of all I've got Final Crisis yeah so I'd want to see like a like a country that was what if Darkseid won Final Crisis or what if that fight was still going on because Final Crisis is the best another one Legion Lost it's a story where the reboot Legion and we're going to get into Legion soon well, I don't know when, but Legion's a big one. Legion, At some point. Legion's like Hawkman level. Oh, shit. But it's about, like, 12 Legion members who get lost in, like, uncharted space. Oh, okay. I really like that book. Another one, Batman Incorporated. Yeah. I, I love Batman Incorporated. I love the Club of Heroes. So I'd love to see, like, a country that's all the superheroes in that country are all Batman. Oh, that'd be so cool. Another one, going over to Marvel now, you know, Captain Britain in MI-13. Because I missed that book a lot. I'd love to see a country that was next wave. Remember next wave? Yes. And if that country was like next wave physics. Yeah. Like if the whole country was as bonkers as next wave is. And lastly, there was a story called Avengers Arena. Yeah. Which was basically Hunger Games, but with teen superheroes. That's cool. So I think you could like expand that to like a country. Yeah. And be like all the teen superheroes stuck in this Avengers Arena murder world. Next question comes from our friend Ben Gully, fans Ferdinand too. Ah, oh, Ben. On Twitter. And this is for both of us. He wants to know, is there anything you're especially looking forward to slash especially dreading? Well. <laughs> so I'll start with you. Oh, fucking Howard the Duck. Okay, but... I, Not I, the comic. I said I'd read the comic. It's just like... Watching the film. Yeah, because I've seen bits of the film and his, like, people eyes creep me out. And that's put me off the whole personified duck thing. What about the duck with boobs in the bath? Oh no, that's messed up. I blocked it out. It's <laughs> back. <laughs> oh, it's horrible. I hate it. What about what characters to cover on Jennings Misery? Oh god. Is there anyone you're looking forward to? Any character that you want us to get to? I can think of one. I want. I want to learn about Dark Side. Dark Side, yeah. Uh, I want. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, I want to learn about Alchemist. I don't know anything about Aquaman. I'm just really drawn to his, like... Fish powers. Fish powers, yeah. For lack of better description. I, I'm i not looking forward to the ones that are hard work. Which, like, which ones? So Hawkman, obviously. Oh, yeah, Hawkman. I've pushed Hawkman aside as something we'll probably never reach. I've said episode 50. Episode oh, okay, 50 is yeah. going to be Hawkman. The Legion's going to be complicated. Wonder Girl's going to be very complicated. We might do Cable at some point. I kind of want to stay away from the X-Men stuff, as I've said. But it's those sorts of characters, the the black holes of continuity. The ones that take like nine years to write out. Yeah, I think the one I think I'm dreading Legion the most actually. 
because I feel like Hawkman can fit into an episode Legion is so much more than that because they just keep trying to fix it and it keeps getting worse and there's so many different iterations of the Legion now there's the Legion and there's like five years later Legion and then there's the reboot and there's the three boot the three and, boot just, and then there's just stop then there's the return to the originals and then there's New 52 and oh god yeah, I'm dreading the Legion of Superheroes the most. And I love the Legion of Superheroes. Like Hawkman, I'm not too fussed, but I really, really like the Legion. So yeah, that, that's who I'm... Uh, as for looking forward to, I'm really looking forward to doing Grant Morrison's Batman. Yes! Batman! Batman was like, Batman's the shit. Well, that leads us into our next question. Do you think Batman stories are naturally more appealing than Superman stories? And that comes from... James Leach at James D. Leach on Twitter. I really like Batman. Yeah. I like, I super love the Batman movies. I've always super loved Batman. Like, that's not to say that I like, I'm Chris Sims level of Batman. <laughs> like, I, I just like Batman a whole bunch. And I don't know much about Superman. Yeah. Like, I like him and he appeals to me and he's cool. But Batman's always been, like, my guy. Yeah. So I've always been more drawn to him for some unknown reason. Yeah, I'm a Superman guy, you know that. I know that you're a Superman guy, I'm very aware. Yeah, I love I love Superman. He's up there with The Flash, like, top two. I'm pretty much tired at this point. I, I would say I look up to Superman. He gives me something to aspire to. Yeah, he like, really he's does. not the ideal human. That's what I, I say he is. He's, he's not a human. Yeah, but I and say... And he's still flawed. But I, I say he, he represents what humanity can be. Yeah, like... And that's all because of his parents. He's something to look up to in a, like... He's uh, a good guy. I, I say he's the most human of us. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And, but I also agree with uh, James's question. I think uh, Batman stories are naturally more appealing. I don't know if it's because they're, like, darker. I think it's because they're darker, and that's just kind of how pop culture is these days. But I think it's because... Superman seems harder to get into because people who don't like Superman always put to, oh he, he can do anything to what people say that Superman isn't interesting because he's too powerful whereas they say Batman he doesn't have any powers so there's more drama. yeah the whole oh Batman doesn't have powers thing is always thrown around and yeah. I'm like well that doesn't mean he's not cool but no people use that as him being cool cooler than Superman I always said it the other way around. I always thought people I know always think yeah. Superman's like way cooler. Really? Yeah. D- different crowds, I guess. Yeah. But I, yeah, I think Batman stories are just naturally more appealing than Superman stories. But I prefer Superman. I just think the general public would rather experience a Batman story than a Superman story. Yours is from a more like not educated, like as someone who's read them. Yeah. Yeah, like you're more. Like, I've read both. I know which one's like more appealing to more people or whatever. Yeah. Mine's more like what the general public are going to respond like, to. But I feel like more like my friends who like superhero fiction but don't read comics would prefer Batman. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I think that's what this question is really. Yeah. Next up, we have at Tyler Javier. Yeah. And he wants to know: Do you prefer classic superheroes like Superman or Thor? Or more street level ones, Daredevil, Luke Cage, Iron Fist. So you prefer like superheroes who are like over the top and really powerful, or like day to day superheroes? I used to be super into like the whole like hella powerful capes, flying mm-hmm. powers, magic thing. But like as I've got more into it, it's definitely more like street level people. Yeah. Like I'm super into like the normal people being able to mm-hmm. fight the crime. And, like, I think that helps with, like, TV shows and stuff. Like, yeah. The Flash is just a normal guy. Yeah, well, my answer to this was it's a mix of both, and I think The Flash represents a mix of both. Yeah, because he's, like, he's hella powerful. Yeah, but he's But he's also, dude. like, he's just a scientist guy. Uh, well, especially with Wally West, who is, like, the blue-collar Flash. Yeah. So yeah, I'm super into both, but yeah. more the street level. When I was a kid, I really, like, Daredevil was, like, my favourite character when I was a kid. And I think it was for those reasons a lot. But then, like, I look up to Superman. Like, Super- like Superman is one of my favourite characters. It's a mix, really. Like, see, I think The Flash represents that. Bits of both. Yeah. I don't I don't think either of us have, like, a answer for that. Yeah. Concrete answer. And the last question comes from at Getter 404. Okay. And this is more for me. Okay. And he's asked, 
what character do you think needs a big revival revitalization next and the examples he's given is Carol Danvers Captain Marvel and Bucky Barnes but I think you could also go Hawkeye Batgirl Spider Woman it's a big trend at the moment yeah they're bringing a lot of people back and I've give, noticed that as someone like and giving them like new new directions and they've got like an indie comics feel to them a lot of them yeah so I've got three answers for this first up is Manhunter I don't even know who that is. Manhunter is a female DC character. Well, she's like the seventh Manhunter or something. But in the new 52, she doesn't have to be. Yeah, she could be the first Manhunter. And she's just a really cool character. She's a lawyer by day. She's a bit like Daredevil. Lawyer by day, superhero by night. She's got like a staff. That's cool. I really like Manhunter. Secondly, Ryan Cho. Oh, okay. Who was the second Atom. And when the new 52 was announced... They were like, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to do Justice League and it's going to be the big seven to start with. But then in the second year, we're going to bring in Firestorm, we're going to bring in Green Arrow, we're going to bring in back Ryan Cho as the Atom. Because Ryan Cho was fucking shitted on. He was destroyed. Like, it was written by Gail Simone for 25 glorious issues. And Gail Simone left and DC just decided they didn't want anything to do with him anymore. And he was murdered by... Like Deathstroke and some other oh, dudes God. to like make them look cool. That's not good. So when the new Fifty Two was announced, it was like, yeah, we're gonna fix that mistake. We're gonna bring Ryan back. He's gonna be the Atom. He's gonna be the the first Atom of the new Fifty Two. Yeah. Like, awesome. I love Ryan Joe. He's great. Nearly three and a half years into the new Fifty Two, hasn't shown up. I think he's been like he's been mentioned. His name has been oh, mentioned, but he's not appeared. See ya. I really think they should bring back Ryan Cho as the Atom. Lastly, and I think this is an obvious one, someone dying for their own solo series, who does currently have their own solo series, technically. It's the Falcon. Okay, yeah. Because the Falcon is currently Captain America. Yeah. But I think everyone knows by the time the next film comes out, Steve Rogers is going to be Captain America again. Yeah. What I hope is that they can spin that story out into a way that Sam Wilson can get his own ongoing. Yeah. So those okay. are, those are my three picks for revival revitalizations of characters we're about to see in ongoing comics. Yeah. Um. Thank you everyone for your questions. If you have any listener questions, you can email us journeytomisery at gmail dot com. If you want to find the show, we're on iTunes. Just search Journey to Misery. Please leave us a rating, a review, subscribe. I do believe we got some reviews today, but they didn't show up on iTunes. So. I'm going to check them next week and we'll get them right out next week. Maybe they go through like an authorization process. Yeah. Like um, Amazon and stuff. Yeah, so I apologise to anyone who you left the review today, but we'll get it right out as soon as it shows up. For us to see. So yeah, if you leave us a rating and review, people can find the podcast and help, it helps more people find it. Also, Stitcher is a thing that I don't fully understand, but if, is that, if that is how you get your podcasts, we are better. As I mentioned a bunch of times at the start of the show, patreon.com slash kingimpulse if you would like to support the show in any ways. We've got some cool goals coming up. We're going to have some more cool rewards to make Helen or watch How's the Duck. Please, Helen. Well, like, I want to reach goals. That's awesome. But I, I feel like I'm going to be traumatised. Like, that shit is horrible. If you want to find past episodes, go to kingimpulse.com, which is where all the episodes are. I just find the image gallery to go along with all the episodes. Leave that aside with you. Yeah, that was it. My name is Kieran Shiak. I am at Kingdom Post on Twitter. I'm Helen Hart and I hate you on Twitter. This has been a journey into misery. Uh, yeah, yeah, mm, no, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> well, Karen Page died, his wife left yeah, him, like, he's in prison. Yes, but then also, like, so much cool stuff happened. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll see you next week. Bye.